that's going on there with the fires and stuff there, I'm guessing that God would bless them. Linda Rogers has uh, continued to uplift her and bless her this morning. Brother Eddie, they need prayer this morning for his back. And we're just praying for uh, uh, Stalinda's family as well there and stuff. I heard good things going on with uh, some of uh, Brother Eddie's family there. So good good things there. Randy Sharp, uh, uh, a gunshot accident in the leg. He's going to have surgery this morning. So remember, Brother Randy, that God would bless and minister to him as well in this endeavor there. No doubt in pain. Uh, Martha Jones, uh, eye cancer. Uh, that God would... Is it Martha or Marta? Marta Jones, uh, eye cancer there. God will bless that need this morning as we pray. And Melody Lewis needs a healing in her body. Sister Melody and them were just praying for her and praying that God would minister to that need. How many says unsaved loved ones, amen, upraised hand this morning, unspoken request, God sees those hands this morning. We're going to sing a song this morning, prepare our hearts, go to the Lord in prayer, and we're going to pray for these needs this morning, amen. Holy Spirit, you are welcome in this place. Thank you, Jesus. Holy Spirit, thou art well. and you was going to leave a comforter for us, Lord Jesus, and you left that Holy Spirit. Lord, and we just pray that you would welcome here this morning, Lord, to comfort those that are hurting, to bless those that needs a touching body. Lord, we just praise you this morning, and we welcome you into this service and in this place. If you're out there this morning, Lord, and you want to have something done this morning, you want us to pray for you in some way, we're going to open these altars this morning just for a minute that we can pray for those that have something in their body, Lord, or maybe a need that they need prayed for. If you have that this morning, you'd like for us to pray for you, come to these altars. We'd be more than happy to pray. We're going to pray for these other needs as well. Thank you, Lord Jesus. We thank you, God, this morning. God, for each and every one, Lord, that has been mentioned here this morning. We pray for those battling with cancer, Lord. We pray for those that are struggling, Lord Jesus, with whatever infirmities that they might be, Lord. We just pray and lift up our brothers and sisters, Lord, that's going through it this morning. God, I just pray that you would minister, Lord. You know the need, Lord Jesus, in their life. You know what they're facing, Lord. God, I just pray your hand of protection, that healing hand would come upon them, Lord. God, I pray that you would bless, Lord, our church, may your anointing flow, Lord Jesus, God, from the pastor, Lord Jesus, down to the people, Lord. God, your anointing would just flow around and through this service and each and every one that's here. God, that we can go out, Lord, and we can reach the lost. We can pray for all those unsaved loved ones, Lord, that the hands that was up raised this morning, God, that you've seen each and every hand. Lord, we just pray that you would bless them, Lord Jesus, God, and they would find a place of salvation before it's too late. God, we pray for every unspoken request, Lord, that was similar with Lord Jesus with the upraised hand this morning. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. God, we pray for our country, Lord Jesus. We pray, God, for our leaders, Lord Jesus. We pray that you're anointing, God, that once again, Lord Jesus, that this nation would cry out to you. God, bless this USA, Lord. We pray, Lord, that you administer, God, into each and every facet, Lord, of this, of this great nation, Lord, and those that fight, Lord, each and every day. God, keep your hands of protection upon them, Lord Jesus. God, bless them, Lord, as they reach out and they they go out into places lord jesus facing the enemy every day may your hands of protection be upon him lord jesus god minister lord unto our veterans lord jesus 
God that is here this morning, the veterans that are in this, this city, Lord, in this state, in this country. God, I pray your protection upon them. May you give them blessing, Lord. Just lift them up on this special day that's coming up, Lord. God, that we will never forget what great sacrifice that they've made that we can enjoy what we enjoy. We thank you, Lord, for them, Lord Jesus, today. God, minister, Lord. Hallelujah. God, those that are unable to be here, Lord, our shut-ins, Lord Jesus, we pray that you would bless and minister to them, God. Right there where they are, Lord, we're praying for them this morning. Thank you, Jesus. Church, there's several left here on the front that's praying. Just reach your hands towards them if you don't want to come to the front and pray forward with these this morning. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus.
man of God. He especially preached the King of Lord. Wait a minute, I can't hear it. I can't hear it. My mind. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I love you, Lord, for your mercy never fails me, and all my days I've been held in your hand. From the moment that I wake up till I lay my head, oh, I will sing of the goodness. Of God. And all my life you have been faithful. And all my life you have been so, so good. With every breath that I am able, oh, I will sing of the goodness. Of God. I love your voice. You have led me through the fire. In darkest night, you are close like no other. I've known you as a father. I've known you as a friend. And I have in the goodness of God. And all my life you have been faithful. And all my life you have been so, so good. With every breath that I am able, oh, I will sing of the goodness God. I love you, Lord, for your mercy never fails me. All my days I've been held in your hand. From the moment that I wake up until I lay my head, oh, I will sing of the goodness. Of God. And all my life you have been faithful. And all my life you have been so, so good. With every breath that I am able, oh, I will sing of the goodness of God. I love your voice Well, you have led me through the fire In darkest night You are close like no other Well, I've known you as a father I've known you as a friend And I have lived in the goodness of God
and I have lived in the goodness of God. because hard for me to comprehend this but I was with him before I got here amen. and you were too amen? amen what a blessing what a blessing thank you for praying with and for each other it's a great honor amen that we get to pray how many understands this praying is God's ideal and not ours amen. you ever think it's your ideal you miss the whole point of prayer yeah. it's God's ideal amen and when you read that Bible, you'll find out God had a lot of great ideas too. Amen. Amen. Our children's church are going to make their way across. And we appreciate Sister Elaine and taking them and Brother Bill and all the ones that support our children. Wednesday night, wasn't that an awesome time? Amen. Kids doing their racing and all that and all the help with the food and all the activities. Thank you, adults. Thank you. Thank you. Makes it special. We had like, I think, over 100, like 105 uh, souls here Wednesday evening. And that's a great, great number. Amen. Thank you for participation because it's important. Let me tell you. I tell you something I learned, I learned a long time ago. We vote with our feet. Yep. Yeah. Amen. And our pocketbook. That's the two things that count in our life as we vote. Amen. So, uh... Appreciate the Lord and appreciate you and all that you have done. And as we near more closer to uh, holiday stuff, you know, Thanksgiving, of course, is on the horizon. And many activities I know are being planned, Christmas get-togethers. I think family get-togethers are awesome. I think you ought to get together with your family. I do believe you ought to get together with your family if you possibly can. I realize distance and work schedules hinder that sometimes, but... Uh, I think family, listen, God made family before He made the church. Amen. That don't mean family comes ahead of the church. It means family is what makes the church. 
That's the way God set that up. And so I want to make sure I adhere to the formulas, the ideals, and the principles that the Master has created and that He has set forth. Today, we are wanting to make sure we give a little special recognition to our veterans. And Brother Keith's already recognized our, our men and women who have given themselves. I'm going to tell you something. We, we in, in America are facing some challenges like we never have, and it's because sin is being unchecked. Yes. We are living in a time when a person don't, don't like the way they were born. They can have a gender change, they think. But I want to tell you, there's never going to be a man have a baby. And there's never going to be a woman that can have a baby without a man. Can I say that and be all right? I don't care how many operations you have and all the things that go on. Men ain't going to be able to do that. Man thinks he can do a lot of things, but he can't. And God has allowed some things to go along uh, the time frame in which we're seeing. I just want to tell you, don't be discouraged with your, with your country and with things that go on. Know this, that praying people are, are the ones that can change the outcome of everything. But it takes my people who are called by my name to humble themselves and pray and to seek my face and turn from their wicked ways. He said, then I'll heal their land and I'll be their God. That God promised in the Word and I'm glad I can stand on the promise of the Lord. Amen? Amen. But thank God for, for men and women who serve in our military, our law enforcement, all these things. We want, to, we want to say thanks to each one and to people that are watching this online. There's some that watch us as time goes on and we appreciate all the comments that come in and all the recognition that comes. But we're more thankful when God recognizes us. He said, if the Lord don't keep the city, He said, the guard stays awake in vain. If the Lord don't plow the field, He said, the farmer plants in vain. And so God sets us up to understand that everything hinges on the laws and the forward motion of God's work in our hearts and our lives. But today, we just want to give a little special uh, recognition to uh, our veterans that are here. And we want to tell you, thank you for serving uh, our country, serving us. Listen, it's because of you we have able we have the ability to be here this morning and to worship God and not worry about being interfered with. Amen. Now, I believe that that is on the, on the threat pattern. I believe that that is coming under threat. And if the devil is able to have his way, you won't get to come to church and just worship God. Amen. They, they will try to have, as the Bible tells us, there's going to be a one world government. There's going to be a one world religion. There's going to be all these things that stack themselves up against the Lord and His Christ. Because the one thing that the enemy is most afraid of is you get a hold of God and God got a hold of you. That's what Satan is afraid of. And so he works very hard to dissuade you, to dissuade me from the things of heaven. So, amen. I, I'm so thankful for the Lord and His mercy and His grace. One more time, I want to get our, our veterans, if you can, would you stand one more time across the congregation, all the, the veterans that we have that served in the military. Stand, you just keep standing for a minute. Amen. Hallelujah. Just stay standing just for if you can for a second. Uh, uh, Zach and Ashton, would you two gentlemen come and help me here just right quick, man? I have an envelope we want to give you, gentlemen, amen, and ladies, and all that are that have served, amen. I think i got enough here. Let me get a couple. I want to make sure you don't run out. Let me get them all. <laughs> amen. And I want you to hand one of these to everyone. That's, if you'll go to that side, and you take this side, amen, and... This is a little token from Mulberry Assembly to say thank you for giving us a chance to have a worship service free from tyranny, free from interference, free from all the stuff that goes on in our society. <clears throat> we have a gas card in there so you can buy gas. We figure most people buy gas sooner or later. And if you don't like it, give it back to the pastor. <laughs> Sister Kendricks knows what to do with it. <laughs> Amen. Amen. And I just want to say thank you for all and each one of our veterans today. Amen. And I, I tell you what I want to do. I'm going to do something. This is unplanned and, and unpracticed. And it's just going to be, it's going to be what it is. Do you, you got that? Put that right there. All right. I want to get Brother Kenneth Medlock to say something. Brother Kenneth, I didn't prep you for this. Come up here, Brother Kenneth. Come right here. Brother Kenneth, how old are you? 90 years old. 
90. A veteran. And we got lots of them here. I just want you to greet the people and say howdy. Howdy. <laughs> Every one of you, I do, from my heart, you're a great crowd of people, and we appreciate you. Amen. Thank you, my brother. Amen. Give all of our veterans a great big appreciation. Amen. Brother Glenn, he's 90, you're 92, is that right, Brother Glenn? 91, but you're going on 92. Close. Close, amen. I want you to say something, amen. If you're 90, you deserve to say something in here. Amen. It was an honor to serve my country, and it's an honor to go to this church. I appreciate it. Amen. Wow. How awesome is that? Gentlemen, thank you. Thank every one of you for your sacrifice, for your labor of love. Let me tell you something. We wouldn't be here today. Our, our country's been threatened many times. And how many knows it's under a threat still? But how many knows Satan will not prevail if we will walk with God? we got to walk with God. Yes, sir. We have missed Who do we miss? Brother Bill Wilson. Were you standing, Brother Bill, or were you sitting? Mm -hmm. I don't want to miss a one. Now, if you can't use the gas card, you let me know. Sister Kendra should take care of that. She don't buy gas. I buy gas. That's exactly right. I buy the gas. All right. Thank you, gentlemen. Thank you, thank you, thank you, church. Let's give them another warm appreciation. God owes me nothing. I remind me, John Kendricks, of that every day of my life. He owes me no thing. This week, I have been so, so focused on that because he's just made himself so real to me in these special ways. And I just want to tell you, thank you for praying with and for each other. Church, the church that prays together is a church that's going to it'll stay together. We have to learn that key ingredient to unity connection. Our families stay together when we pray together. And so it's very vital, it's very important that we, we make that the agenda every day that we possibly can. Amen. And so, hallelujah. Didn't the choir musicians and singers, didn't they do great this morning? Amen. Appreciate them so very, very much. As God helps us, we are working towards some things. As I said, we'll do a staff meeting next week. And we encourage you to please make it if you possibly can. We're launching some new things, getting ready. As the uh, year ends and the new year rolls up, we're wanting to break some more structure into some things uh, to where things are not helter-skelter, where everybody knows what uh, needs to happen. And if, if you're the one that we're looking at to get that done, it just kind of helps for things to go good. How many knows that our military wouldn't function if the soldiers all got to do what they wanted to? Right, right. The first thing they teach you when you go in the military is discipline. Right. They teach you the man with a loud voice is King Kong, baby. Yeah. What he says is the rule. Yeah. Amen. Heard a man say, you know, he said he went through, he joined the military. He said, man, they're going through that, that boot camp. He said they rubbed all the hide off their elbows and their knees. He said, man, they're hurting. They're, they're in that. They don't get in that bunk over four or five hours a night. He said that, that, that horn goes off in the morning. He said there was one guy in the bunk right above me. He said he cried all night long. He said I rushed out pulling my pants up. He said I'm out talking to that first sergeant. said, sir, would you please leave Mr. So-and-so in his bunk? He keeps me awake crying all night long. I can't get any rest. He said, buddy, he let out cuss words like I ain't never heard a man cuss. And he said, I'm going to tell you what you do. You get your so-and-so back in that bunk and you tell him to get his clothes on and get out here. I'm going to do one of two things. I'm going to make a soldier out of him or I'm going to send him home crying to mama packing his bag because you don't need a wimp in that foxhole when you're fighting the enemy. We've 
become soft in our day and time, church. Listen, God's looking for a militant church. Yeah. Amen. So we have to go around and not wear our feelings out on our sleeves, but wear the hardware of the Word of God around us and walk and face the enemy and say, as for me and my house, I'm going to serve the Lord. It takes a man to serve God. It takes a woman to serve God. Any whip can walk out the door mad and huffed up about the color of the carpet or the heat was too high or the air was too cold. Hey, listen, we can complain and we don't have to get paid to do that. Amen. Okay, I better quit right now. I'm glad for militant men and women that serve the Lord. I believe in men being men and women being women. And I hope I got a lot of amens on that. God sets us up for that very thing. Hallelujah. Today, I want to talk to us about something real important, but I have one video I do want to share with you. As God has... I just saw this. It was on Facebook. It's free. You, anybody could watch it, but I saw it, and it ministered to me, and I think it will minister especially to all of our veterans and the family of our veterans. How many have men and women who have went on to meet the Lord, and it's, it's your parents or your grandparents or kin to somebody that served in the military. I want to see your hand. I want to see that raise. You got somebody in your family. They've already went on to meet the Lord. Can I see your hand? Look at that across this country, this nation, this city, this church. People, we're all connected, aren't we? Yeah. My dad served in World War II, and many of you, your parents served in some World War One, World War Two, Korean War, Vietnam War. And other things that have went on, uh, all the wars that have went on, and I'm going to tell you, sad to say, as long as sin is uh, turned loose and Satan's able to have his way, there's going to be more wars, folks. As a matter of fact, the Bible said when we get close to the end of time, there's going to be wars and rumors of wars. But here's what Jesus said: See that you be not soon shaken or troubled in mind. If you believe in God, Jesus said, believe also in me. In my Father's house are many mansions. If it were not true, I would. Told you. He said, but I'm going to go away, prepare the place for you. I will come again and receive you to myself. I'm looking to go home. Yeah. Hallelujah. But I want to thank the veterans for all your sacrifices that you have given. And sometimes it seems like it goes unnoticed and uncared for. And I get real angry when I see people desecrate the American flag because it just makes me very mad. Amen. And I tell them, if you don't like it, get out of this country. Yeah. Go live in a country that you can agree with because I ain't moving and I ain't changing. Yeah. Here's our video. I want you to watch that. Take a look. Almighty God, we thank you for the veterans, for the heroes and leaders, for the warriors and protectors, for those who served during times of unrest or in seasons of peace, for those of generations past and for those with us today. We honor them for their faithful service in defending our freedom, for their undeniable courage, determination, and resolve. Help us to remember what they stood for, to never forget their devotion, and to proudly carry on their legacy of loyalty from this day forward.
have any brave hearts in the house today? The land of the free. They wanted us a home of the brave. Thank you, men. Thank you, ladies, for your service, your dedication for our, to our country. I can't tell you what's coming, but I can tell you who's coming. Amen. Amen. I know that beyond the shadow of a doubt. That's right. So don't let the events of the hour cloud your mind. And don't put your hope in men. Put your hope, your confidence in the Master. Yes, amen. He said the heart of the King is in His hand. And I want to make sure I maintain that posture of understanding with my Lord and with Christ. Hallelujah. As I prayed and was ministering before the Lord, God dealt with my heart. I wanted to minister about keeping that, that promise, that walking out that promise. We'll get back to that. But the Lord dealt with me about something that I felt was very uh, necessary in my heart for at least one somebody here today. Are you okay if I just preach to one person? Yeah. Amen. What if that one person is the pastor? Is it okay if I preach to yes, me? Sir. Would y'all shout amen if I'm preaching to amen. me? Amen. 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 I need to be preached to. I listen to lots of different uh, voices, but I make sure it's the voice that is the voice of, of, of right standing with the Lord as far as I can tell and know. I want to talk about breaking the cycle this morning. Life is a cycle. Have you ever noticed you that have more than one sibling in your family, you have brothers or sisters, have you ever noticed how the time of birth in your family comes in a cycle? It's pretty amazing, isn't it? In my family, I'll use my family, in my family there's seven of us. I had a brother born in 39, one in 49, one in 59. I had a sister born in 45 and I was born in 55. We had two odd ducks. We won't talk about them. <laughs> we have birthdays in March, in June, February, and November. That's the months of our family's birthdays. And I, I noticed years ago about how cycles and things work in our lives. And sometimes we may not realize that we become protégés, products, and byproducts of cycles that go in and we don't even realize we are engaged in a cycle of life. And sometimes that cycle is, is entrenched very deep according to what your grandparents did and, and how they lived and passed on to your parents who passed on to you. It's easy for those things, traditions and ideals and, and even values, they pass on many times and it creates a cycle of, of human existence and human uh, accomplishments even in our life. So this thought today comes on the heels of that. I can tell you God gave me this message in 2018, six years ago, for today. It blows my mind how God sets things up. Yeah. And so I'm so thankful that God has looked down the road of my life and your life and He's already got things prepared before you and I arrive there. Aren't you thankful for that? Yeah. Book of Ruth chapter 1 is where I want to go today. It's not, it's not just a Mother's Day message. This is a, this is a Believer's Day message. Amen. Everybody would you say, I'm listening. I'm listening. Everybody didn't say it, but I trust you'll get there. <laughs> Ruth 1 and 16 is where I want to begin reading. As you know, uh, Ruth's husband, Elimelech, the Bible said that him and Ruth, they left during their time of famine. They went down into the country of Moab because uh, the groceries got thin. How many knows when the grocery line gets thin, people start really getting cranky? Yeah. Yeah. Saints of God, it may very well happen in America, let me tell you. And so, as it did, they made a, a journey down to this, uh, down to this land of Moab, Ruth and Elimelech, and they took, uh, took their two sons with them. And there they married women, folks from that land, Moabite women. And as things turned out not so good, uh, Ruth's husband got sick and died. Ruth's sons got sick and they died. And she's left with two daughters-in-law. But things came and turned 
And now things are better back in Israel. And she says, I want to return home. And to do that, she says to her daughters-in-law, I want you to go back to your families. I'm too old to have a son for you to wait on, for him to grow up and you to marry and to have children. I want you to go back to your family and be with your family. But one of the daughters-in-law, whose name is Ruth, that's who this story is written about, comes in, and that's where I'm going to pick up the story and read with you. Verse 16, and I'm reading from the easy read version, so please don't crucify me over that, but it, 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 I'm not changing anything. It just gets it where you can comprehend what's going on. Ruth answered, her mother-in-law said, Don't force me to leave you, and don't make me turn back from following you. Wherever you go, I will go. Wherever you stay, I will stay. Your people will be my people. And your God will be my God. That's some of the greatest scripture you'll ever read in the Bible. Yeah. 17th verse, wherever you die, I'm going to die. I will be buried there with you. May the Lord strike me down if anything but death separates you and me. Oh, mother-in-law, I added that word. When Naomi saw that Ruth was determined to go with her, she ended the conversation. So both of them went on until they came to Bethlehem. And when they entered Bethlehem, the whole town was excited about them coming. This can't be Naomi, can't it? And the women asked. She answered them, don't call me Naomi, which means sweet. Call me Mara, which means bitter. Because the Almighty has made my life very bitter. How many people do you know blame God for their... Yeah. Oh, yeah. 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 See, God put that in the book. So you and I would know we're not the only ones that fall into that trap. She said in verse 21, I went away full, but the Lord brought me back empty. Why do you call me Naomi when the Lord has tormented me and the Almighty has done evil to me? See, she didn't see the plan of God. Turn to your neighbor and say, you've got to see the plan of God. You do. You do. Verse 22. When Naomi came back from the country of Moab, Ruth, her Moabite daughter-in-law, came along with her and they happened. They happened. They happened. Whew. Everybody say things don't just happen. Mm -hmm. They happened to enter Bethlehem just when the barley harvest began. Oh, thank you, Father. You speak so distinctly and clearly into our bosoms today. I believe, Father, you've set up hearts and lives to hear what you're breathing in the atmosphere in this room. We want to yield to you totally and absolutely with all of our being that you may have your way every step, every breath, every molecule of our energy goes to worship and serve you. It's in the powerful name of Jesus Christ that I bless you, I honor you, I glorify you. My Redeemer, my Savior, my King, my Lord, thank you, thank you, thank you. And all God's people saying, Amen. 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 You can be seated in the house of the Lord. God bless you. There's something I'd like for you to say with me, congregation. Sister Monica, if you put that up the next frame. Amen. I believe it's here. I want you to repeat this after me. I'm not home yet. I'm, home yet. I'm here to serve a purpose. I'm here to serve a purpose. When I pray, I will be changed. When I pray, I will be changed. With God's help, With God's help. I, will I will break the cycle in life that has come to break in on me. The Lord spoke this into my heart sometimes back. There are things you and I cannot change. No matter what we do, what we say. Like what? Like number one, you cannot change who your birth parents are. Cannot be changed. You can change a birth certificate. You can change records. But you cannot change the fact of who your birth parents are. Do I have an amen? amen. Number two, you cannot change the place where you were born. 
that is wrote down in the chronicles of history. It is forever uh, uh, ingrained and engraved in that locality where you are. Number three, you cannot change the color of your skin. Right. Now you can put on all kinds of dope and stuff. But when it all wears off, you're still the same color. Do I have a shout? Amen. Amen. Nor can you change the color of your hair. <laughs> Listen, it may look different, but it's not. Yeah. Woo, hallelujah. You can't change history. Right. Nor can you change the facts of what brought you here this morning. Yeah. Fair, unfair, just, unjust. Facts are just facts. Where I say that? Facts are just facts. That's the truth. God let us understand that. Now facts and truth are different, but facts still are facts. If you've buried one or more of your loved ones, you can't change that either. That has already taken place. Bottom line is whatever has happened is written in the books and the chronicles of life and I, it cannot be altered. It is there. And God wanted me to know that. But one thing can be altered and can be changed and that's yours and my choice. That can be changed. Amen. How many is in for that? Amen. I want to make good choices. You want to make good choices. We all usually learn by pain better than anything. Yeah. Pain makes the memory stick deeper and longer in my life and with your life. When you have pain, you remember. You, you have an association to things. We learn better with pain. Now we can learn academically and we do. But it's so much, uh, it's so much more adhesive to it whenever I am learning through touch, through feelings, through uh, comprehension in my own inner being, I learn these things. And so the Bible tells me about Jesus in, in the book of Hebrews 5, though He was a son, He learned obedience by the things He suffered. The Son of God, the One who was holy, the One filled with the Holy Ghost, the One walking with God the Father, He learned by things He suffered. Saints of God, you, I, we will learn by the things we suffer. Yeah. Amen. How many went through 12 years of grammar school? Can I see your little Paul? <laughs> you can't buy it from me, but I don't think you can pay me to do it again, Brother Kenneth. Yeah. I, I'm thankful for everything I learned in school. Listen, I, I learned how to read, write, and arithmetic. Right. Do you know they're not teaching that in a lot of face, places today? Some of our children don't know how to sign their names in an autograph. Got this just in the last couple of weeks. The youngster went to the bank to open up a account. When they opened up the account, uh, the account Hey man, and, and, and the uh, uh, bank officials there and said, here, here's your signature card, I want you to sign it. They printed their name and said, no, you've got to sign your name. He said, I don't know how to do that. Done in graduated school. Done in going into college life. And could not sign their name. We have sired a culture of people that have become illiterate with all the communication tools and reading abilities that they are. We've sired a culture that is in trouble. Are you hearing me? So we've got to make better choices. Amen? Amen. Jesus learned by the things He suffered. I'm going to learn things by hands-on best of all things. I can learn academically and I do apply myself academically. But I, I learn through going through things. Listen, I learned the stove is hot. Guess how? Anybody in here ever been burnt? Can I see it? Mm -hmm. We learn. We learn by that experience and we learn a lot of other things. So Ruth and her mother-in-law Naomi are stuck in kind of a cycle. That's where I wanted to go. Their existence, watch this, depends largely on other people's kindness. Yeah, right. For God set that up. When you have a widow in your midst and you're cleaning your fields, you leave the corners for the poor people to come by so they'll have something also. But in, in America, we scrape up the corners and we slap them in the head and tell them to go find somewhere else. Yes. Ruth, Naomi, 
are stuck into a cycle. God made provisions, but yet people can ignore that. Once you and I, watch this, once we get in a rut of codependence, it's easy for us to get stuck in that cycle. Yeah. Codependence means somebody else has to perform for me to survive and to make it. God never wanted you and I living like that. He said in the book of Deuteronomy, I'll make you the head and not the tail. We need people who still produce. Men who go to work. Amen. Women who guard the home. We need people who, who function in their roles properly in order that the family has its balance. Are you shouting amen now? Amen. Hallelujah. People online, shout amen so everybody can hear you in here. Amen. Hallelujah. We're creatures of habit. And we adapt ourselves like water to the place of least resistance. How many has ever watched water trickle on the ground? It flows downhill, but it always flows, amen, in a pathway that is least resistant. We as humans pick the same kind of avenue. We flow in the pathways of least resistance. And if this is where I got help before, it's the place I go to for help again. And I am falling into a cycle, amen, that, that digs deep deeper and deeper as I go along. And God wants me to be free from that. Amen. So saints, I want you to say this with me one more time. Are y'all ready? I'm not home yet. I'm not home yet. He uh -huh. yeah, and I want you to know I'm here to serve a purpose. When I pray, I will be changed. With God's help, I will break the cycle in life that comes to break in on me. I want you talking that when you walk out of here today and your wife hears you in the night and you're saying, I'm not home yet. <laughs> Philippians 3.13 Paul gave me this. Whenever that cycle is working and, and moving, I find I need a fresh commitment to the Lord. And I find a way to do it. He gives me in the Word 313 Philippians. Brothers, I do not count myself to have Him taken possession. But one thing I do. But one thing I do. Forgetting. Will everybody say forgetting? forgetting. It's amazing. We forget the things that we're supposed to remember and we remember the things we're supposed to forget. Yeah. Human anatomy. It's a terrible thing. Yep. But he said, this one thing I do, forgetting those things that are behind, and I reach forth to those things that are before. Yep. He said, I press toward the park for the prize of the high calling in Jesus Christ. Yep. Paul learned something and he's passing on to the readers and to the followers of Christ. So you and I have to learn this very important thing. Put the past behind us. Amen. So everybody do this. Put your hands up and say the past is back there. Don't forget that. Amen. And don't look at the people you just pointed to. I want you to learn to forget getting even. Forget who duped you. Forget all those things. Let the frustration and the anger, let it be, let it be discharged out of your being and your consciousness and, and, and learn how to walk in a, a conscious effort that I'm going to forgive as I have been forgiven. Amen. You may have said one time, you just wait till I see them again. I'm going to get even. You need deliverance. Amen. Oh, oh, let me try that again. If you're the person that said, I'm going to get even, you need deliverance. Because that's a demon talking and not Christ. Because you see, the Bible said this. God said, vengeance is mine, I repay. Let me tell you something. God knows how to pay folks back like you never thought. And when He starts paying you back, it don't quit. So if you find yourself in the rut that you need to get out of, you're going to have to find a way to put some things of your past in your past and press forward toward the mark and the prize of the high calling in the Lord Jesus. 
So I just want to help us one more time. Bring it up one more time, Sister Monica. I'm not home yet. I'm not home yet. I'm here to serve a purpose. I'm here to serve a purpose. When I pray, I will be changed. When I pray, I will be changed. With God's help. With God's help. I will break the cycle in life that has come to break in on me. It becomes something that gets ingrained into your spirit. Here's what Naomi told Ruth. She has went through things and now things are stacking up the other way and, and it's changing. Things are being altered because Ruth didn't go around feeling sorry for herself. She's helping her mother-in-law. She's taking grain home. She's been gleaning in the field. She found favor in Boaz's eyes. And now things are beginning to progress. You see, when you focus on God and the right things of God, He opens the doors for the right things to begin to happen. I don't have to push on that door. I don't have to try to manipulate to make it happen. I walk into a place where God's flow is upon my life and I just inhabit where He made a way for me to walk. Oh, Brother John, you make it sound so easy. It is easy. I'm going to tell you what's hard. Holding on to the world and trying to hold on to God, you're going to be like this. Uh, how many of you guys ever been out in a boat? Can I see your hand? All right, in a boat, yeah. Have you ever noticed if you float down the river and you're going all right and you think, no, I'm going to go back this way, you turn the boat. Do you know the hardest thing to do is get that boat crossways the stream? Right. Yeah. <laughs> Streams wanting to carry you down, but you're wanting to go up. And what happens in our in our in our walk with Christ is we think, man, I'm changing direction. I'm tired of floating down with all the dead logs and all the trash and, and all the mess. I'm tired of floating down with all the the the, the, the discharge of, of humanity. I want to go upstream. I want to find fresh water. I want to find streams of living life. I want to go upstream. And when you make the decision to make that turn, it's not instantaneous. You make it up in your mind. But to get your physical world, amen, to change that direction, you get crossways. And the next thing you know, things in your world start rocking. And the thoughts hit your mind. Did I make the right decision? Am I doing the right thing? But the Bible let me know that if I make up my mind and I make the choice, I'm going to go upstream. All of heaven backs me up. And he just backed us a bunch of angels. He said, I'm going to help you today. And they helped me turn that boat and get it going in the right direction. Yeah. So God shows me something that I need to learn from this precious heart named Ruth. Here's what Naomi told her when she's making the change in life. Wash yourself. 3-3. Three, three, and anoint yourself. And put on your raiment. And go down to the floor, the threshing floor. Don't make yourself known to the man, Boaz, until he shall have done eating and drinking. Here's what he's really saying. In James 4 and 8, draw nigh to God and He will draw nigh to you. Clean up your stuff. Everybody say this. I have to do some cleaning. We want God to do the cleaning. He don't do the cleaning. He tells me to clean up. Amen. How many of you would raise a child that said, it's supper time, go wash. Oh, mama, would you come wash my hands, please? Yeah. There, that teenager, he has got a beard and a mustache. Would you come wash my hands, please? Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah, I've got to wipe off that mustache to get the pacifier out. Yeah, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. You see, there's things God relegated to our responsibilities. Right. We want to put it on God. We want to make God what God If it was your will, it would be done. No. I'm going to tell you something. God's will is not always done. Right. That's against the theology of the church. Because the Bible says God's will is that nobody perish. Yet hell has got people screaming right now. Right. If you could hear, you'd fall in that altar and say, My God, don't let me go to hell! Amen. Amen. Man had a vision of hell one time. It was one of the best ones I ever heard. 
He said, God showed him a vision. He said, there was a man. Hey man, hell, people were screaming. They were burning. They were trembling. They were twirling everywhere. Flames were raising high. And people were just in torment. He said, there was a man running around. He'd reach down in that fire. He'd pull up. Hey man, somebody he'd let him back down. He said, he'd run all over the place pulling people up. He's looking. He put them back down. He said, God, what am I looking at? He said, he's looking for that preacher. They lied to him. This preacher ain't playing on lying to you. Yeah. I don't want you in hell, but more than mine, God don't want you there. Yeah. He's willing to let you go through some stuff here to keep you out of there. Yeah. Clean your heart. Clean up your mind. Cleanse your soul. Amen. Wash yourself from the filth and the all sky of this world. If you've done something wrong, admit it. Yeah. Confess it. The Bible said if we confess our sin, He's faithful and He's just. Listen, what God is after is that heart that is polarized and say, God, I did it. My wife didn't make me do it. My kids didn't make me do it. My boss didn't make me do it. God, I sinned. Yeah. Yeah. That's it. Yeah. Boy, when we get there, whew, let me tell you what happens. All of heaven standing in attention. Him yeah. angels saying, all right, boys, get ready. Here it comes. And the master stands out. He parts the water. He said, here, make ready. Get the robe out. I'm fixing to adore my child. And they're coming home. Hallelujah. Yeah. Mm. Waiting on that confession. Anoint yourself. Anoint yourself. It means put on the right attitude. Yeah. Oh my God, we need right attitudes anymore. Yeah. I'm telling you, ever since COVID, ever stinking and nasty attitude has come to the surface. Yeah. If you thought it just came during COVID, you're wrong. It just brought it out. You know what you can learn about people? They don't just up and get mad. They've already been mad. You just pull the trigger that just had them, hey man, expose what they really are. I can tell a lot when I preach. <laughs> because you see people I've learned when you hit a nerve they don't like that right. anoint yourself put on that right thinking that right mind the mind of Christ I want to ask this question when I walk in a room does it light up does it go strangely quiet right that's exactly right. You're exactly right, my brother. It depends on it depends on which pipe the sewer's coming out of. Amen. Yeah, that's right. That's right. Oh, I'm having a time this morning. I'm talking about breaking the cycle. Because you see, God wants you and I out of that rut of codependency. Where I, I'm dependent on somebody else for my livelihood, somebody else for my information, somebody else for my inspiration. God wants me to break out of that, and He wants me to look solely unto Him. He is the Prince of Peace. He is the Rose of Sharon. He is my author of life and the author of faith in my life. I want to look to Him and Him alone, and you do as well. Can you say Amen? amen. God wants me to, when I walk in the room to have my shoulders squared back, have a smile on my face, spring in my step and say, I'm glad I'm here today. Yeah. Hallelujah! Yeah. Now I know there's some people not happy after the election, but there's always unhappy people after elections. Oh, yeah. Yeah. If your God didn't get in, don't despair. Let me tell you, it's not over yet. Because let me tell you what, folks. There's things set in motion that's going to be coming to pass that's going to blow everyone's mind that's in America. Right. That's, right. that's right. No man's our salvation. Our salvation lies where? In, in Jesus and Him alone. Hallelujah. Said to Ruth, get down to the floor. Get down to the floor. In other words, get down to business. Don't get stuck living off of... What's this? Don't get stuck living off of somebody else's blessing. We want to live off other people's blessing. You know what thieves live off of? Somebody else's blessing. They want to rob you. They want to rob me. Thieves want to rob people who have worked hard, put in the sweat, the labor, and they just want to go up there and steal it. Amen. Bunch of cutthroats. They deserve to go to hell if they don't get right. Although that hurt. That's true. We want to be nice. God ain't nice. 
God loves, but God's authoritative. Yes. And God's powerful. And I just want to tell you, He don't put up with junk. Hmm. Ooh, I told you I had a talk with God this week. Don't get stuck living off somebody else's blessing. Fixing to say something that's going to be hard for some folks to digest. The government doesn't owe us a living. Amen. That's right. Right. Don't find it in the book. Our government has blessed us, amen, with certain things and certain benefits, but it's went to seed and it's went the wrong way. Yeah. Now we reward people who are lazy and don't yeah. care. Yeah. Right. 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 Yeah. I think it's a blessing to help people who are incapacitated and have difficulties. But I had a person one time, 18 year olds, told me they signed up for their disability. I said, What do you sign up for? I said, Well, I'm depressed and I can't function. I said, so am I every month when I pay bills. Yeah. Yeah. Does anybody get depressed when you pay bills? Can I see them? Yeah. Yeah. I'll just put all y'all on this. Never mind. I know. No. You see what I'm saying? Do you see the cycle that's developed in our country? People have gotten the word. They're depending on somebody else's stuff. See, the government don't owe me. Do y'all know that every, every check that goes out of the government office had to come from somewhere? Right. How many work for a living in here? Uh huh. Yeah. We do that. And I thank God for, for the benefits that come. But let me tell you, they don't owe me. I, I owe the whole thing, my whole allegiance, and I cry to God that I want to have the right attitude. Listen, the church don't owe me anything either. Amen. I'm the pastor. The church didn't know me. Y'all blessed us. Pastor's appreciation. Amen. You gave me a lot of dead presidents. Thank you, thank you. My wife knows exactly where it needs to go. Do I look okay? You don't want me to come up here. And it's okay, I guess, but... I. When I grew up and had holes in the knees of my britches, that was that was discarded. Now it's valuable, but I, yeah. values have changed. I guess I have to leave that alone. If you got holes in your pants, bless you, Jesus. So many in our country are stuck in the rut of entitlement and welfare living. They don't know how to be productive citizens. God help us to not get in that mentality in our church and in our community. I appreciate benefits. I appreciate perks. I appreciate all those things. But I'm going to tell you something. I had to learn in life. Perks are just perks. Benefits are just benefits. There's only one thing that really counts is that I have the blood applied to my heart. And when I take my last breath, I can stand in front of the king and I'll hear him say these words, Well done, John Kendricks. Yeah. Only it won't be John Kendricks. He's got a name picked out just for me. Yeah. And you. Some of you are going to be known by troublemaker. No, no. You <laughs> Everybody wants somebody else to do the work while they play. Right. So, saints of God, can I do this one more time to the point of being boring? Sister Monica, bring that up one more time. I'm not home yet. I'm, home yet. I'm here to serve a purpose. I'm here to serve a purpose. With God's help. I will break the cycle in life that has broke in on me. Hey, well, let's part of it out and do it again. Let's do it again. I'm not home. I'm here to serve. When I That has come to break. Mm, I hope you write that down. Watch this. I'm about to. I'm about to top out here. Naomi taught Ruth how to break out of welfare from working in the field to owning the field. Yeah. <laughs> It's one thing to work in that field, brother. It's another thing to own that field. Hello, somebody. She was taught how to own. Oh, how do you do that? You got to clean up. You got to anoint yourself. You got to come out of that mentality. You got to break a cycle. Turn to your neighbor and say, We got to break some cycles. Yes, yes. And 
so Ruth was taught how to break out of welfare to own that field and not just lean in it what I want to tell you today is don't be satisfied with just handfuls that other people leave behind. Right. Don't be satisfied with just handfuls other people are throwing and, and, and trying to make, uh, 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 you know, humiliate you. No, sir. God wants you to own that field. Not yeah. so you can brag. Not so you can be egotistical. But so you can help people who need help. Amen. Breaking the cycle. Breaking the cycle. So, what God sets me up is how to go about that. And Paul gave me that. He said to the Philippian church, he said, press forward toward the mark and the prize of our high calling in Christ Jesus. I have to break this cycle that maybe you have to work on that. Amen. Maybe it has you in a rut. And you're kind of thinking, amen. I, I, you know, kids today kind of have this. Their safety net is mom and dad. Yeah, that's right. right. Amen. Don't raise your hand. Don't bobble your eyeballs. But how many kids... Connected to people in this room, if they get in trouble, they always run to mom and dad. And what do we do? We give them drugs for their drug habit. We give them beer for their drinking habit. And we give them tobacco for their smoking. Oh, I don't give them that. If you give them a dollar, you do. Because that's what they'll spend it on. Okay, I, I felt that. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Sorry. Hey, I've helped mine. Yeah. Didn't make me right. Just made me an enabler. Until I got the truth. To break this cycle that maybe has you in a rut. Remember these steps. Forget, reach, and press. So everybody say that with me. Forget, reach, and press. That means there's going to be some things that's just not going to fall exactly in my way. I get to step into the blessing, but I got to press in on some situation and some things. Now I'm fixing to give you something that might blow your mind and it might not. Ruth gained such momentum breaking out of that. She became the wife to Boaz, the owner of the land, of the field she was gleaning from. She became the wife Ruth did. And guess what? It wasn't long. She had a baby. Oh, yeah. Naomi said, wow, I'm a grandma. Yeah. Oh, but let me tell you, it didn't stop there. Because you see, God is teaching how to break the cycle. And Naomi, amen, who come into town saying, don't call me sweet, don't call me blessed, I'm bitter. God has worked against me. But things have made a big circle because of a little girl named Ruth who was a daughter-in-law out of a Moabite camp who was the product of incest from Lot's life. And now she broke out of that mess, out of that tragedy, and she became a part of the heritage of God. And God is going to use Ruth's body to flow the Messiah through. And here she is. And they got Obed as a son. And Naomi takes Obed. And the Bible said she begins to hold it. And watch this. As a grandma, her breast began to give milk. Yeah. Yeah. Hallelujah. Grandma, what are you doing? I'm nursing my grandbaby. Woo. Yeah. Woo. And things changed because they broke the cycle in their lives. You see, church, the Satan, he blinds us in the cycle. Well, my grandma did it and my grandpa did it. That don't mean you have to do it. Uh, uh, well, my neighbor did it and my co-worker did it. That doesn't mean you have to. There's a cycle that I have to break. What do I do? Amen. I have to forget. Come on. Yeah. 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 That's good. I have to reach. And I have to press. Right. If I'm going to break the cycle. Listen, I've got in some ruts in my life. And there's still some ruts I have to get out of. When I got married, I had a bad rut, Brother Keith. When my towel got finished, it landed on the floor where I did. And I walk away. And my wife called me to the side one day, Brother John. Said, honey. Can we talk? Yeah, baby. What? Ooh, I love this married life. She said, I do too. But when you get done with your bath, I ain't your mama. Pick up your towel. You know what she was doing? She's breaking the cycle. Yeah. 
Oh, I can see there's a lot of other women want to do that too, huh? I ain't your mama. Oh, y'all forgive me that word ain't. I know there's no such word as ain't, but today. And so God sets me up to where I can break that cycle. How do I do that? I forget. I reach and I press. She became a nurse. Who thought that? Naomi, who was bitter, got sweet again. Yes. Yeah. And now she's nursing her grandchild. I looked at that. I dug on that for a long time. God, what are you doing? He said, I'm showing you. Nothing's too hard for God. Right. Yeah. <laughs> he gave Sarah a child at 90 years of age. He can take a 70 year old and make her breast flow with nourishing milk for her upcoming grandson. I'm telling you, there is nothing too hard for God. It's just too hard for John Kimmich to fathom, to believe, to comprehend. But if I will forget, if I will reach, and if I will press, I can break the cycle that has broke in on me. So hearts, on this notable recognition of Veterans Day, I'll tell you what, my daddy and some of your parents and grandparents and siblings fought for what we call the American way of life. And if I disagree with you, I don't have the right to go burn down your barn. No right. Come on. Or to plunder your store. No. Or to make an utter fool and idiot out of my intelligence, which is what people do. Yes. We don't win by that way. Come on. No. The weapons of our warfare. It's not burning down businesses and stealing products. But they're mighty through God. Watch this. Pulling down. Pulling down. Pulling down what? Stronghold. Cycles of life are strongholds that captivates me and captivates you and isolates us and thinks, I can't get out of this. I can't do different. I can't do better. You can do better. You will do better. You forget. You reach and you press and God begins to arrange things and before you know it, you start nursing the grandchild. Oh, we just stand on your feet and bow your heads. Hallelujah. 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 Lamb of God. Lamb of God. So many things we have ignored and passed by when you laid the opportunity right in front of us. I want to honor you. I want to glorify you. So I'm asking you, Father, that you would minister to every single dad, every veteran that's in this room. Some may feel like they fought for a lost cause, but they did not. We're here. And their children, their grandchildren, their great-grandchildren have become recipients of a fantastic godly heritage. I'm asking you that you would minister, O oh God, to the heart, to the life of every individual. Because Satan, I know, he is an artist at capturing us into cycles that have no end. But God, you showed me how you broke Ruth out of that Moabite lifestyle. Out of that mentality that I'll never be better than what I was born in. You broke her out of that. You gave her a mother-in-law that had some roots that went deep enough to keep them through a famine and through difficulty. And I'm asking you that you would now make another deposit in this room. That we would adhere to you Father, for the blessing that you offer. For your will to be done in this earth as it is in heaven. There will be no rebellion there. There will be no what ifs and maybe so's. It will all be finalized. We will be captured and sealed under the power of the Holy Ghost. Father, I'm asking you to stretch your hand to touch every one of our veterans who have served. Thank you. Many that are even are not here. Some have already went on ahead. Some didn't even get to see 
what goes on in Mulberry Assembly of God today that spent years in prayer. They spent moments and nights God agonizing for the salvation of their offspring. And it's here today. And some didn't get to see it. As you said in the book of Hebrews, they were persuaded having seen it afar off. Now, would you penetrate everyone in our hearts? Help us to be appreciative and thankful and break a cycle of codependency. Looking to somebody else for, for our highs and for our substance and for our get-alongs and get-bys. But we have to look unto You. And that's where we want to land. In Jesus' mighty name. In the name of the living Christ. Heads are bowed and eyes are closed. This is a wide open altar call. And I believe it's for every man and every woman in this building. God, I am not home yet. I'm here to serve a purpose. My God, with your help, with your help, I will break the cycle that has broke in on my life to contain, control, and dominate me. Can we do that? Can we find us a place and talk to the Master? If you don't know Him personally, this is a time to get to know Him. I sense Him walking in this room, in every pew. The cycle. He wants to break the cycle. Well, maybe it's the same person that makes you mad all the time. He wants to break that cycle. Maybe it's something that can get under your skin. and It's just a sensitive and a sore place. God wants to set me free from that cycle that keeps showing up at opportune time. Hallelujah. Will you? Will you? Will you? Will you make this altar the place of God's connection? in your next moments of life. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Will you do that? Will you allow the minister, amen, the ministry of the Holy Spirit to break in and to change the trajectory of your forward march in a cycle that wants to hold you a prisoner, hold you a captor, hold you, amen, and amen. Hallelujah. 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 Pray, precious heart. Talk to the Master. Oh God, I'm not home yet. I'm here to serve a purpose. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Ruth was alive to serve a purpose. Even Naomi thought it was a lost cause. But God, you use Ruth to come and to bring a new, fresh presentation of your mercies and your grace and your divine oracles. And you, God, made a heritage in the lineage for Christ to come to this earth. Hallelujah. That's what we are. We are products of the promise. And the promise has been given to flow through our lives that the next generation will have an encounter with the living God and the cycle of their mentality, how atheistic ideals and agnostic I program will be defeated and God, God, will be the nurser of the new generation. Hallelujah. 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 Lamb of God. Lamb of God. Lamb of God. Lamb of God. Oh, thank you, Lord. 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 Oh, Lamb of God. Yes, my God. Yes, my God. Yes, my God. For your gracious love and your overwhelming kindness, we today, Father, we forget, we reach, and we press. Hallelujah. 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 By your divine hand, we are awarded this time in this generation. Let this be the time 